Okay, so we're going to make this one very long, but I think it is an important topic. Um, and it's to do with um, freedom of religion versus um, how that religion could potentially impact others in society. And when I when I quote the two cases I'm thinking of, uh, hopefully that will make sense. I mean, in terms of the, the topic that I'm calling this. Um, description that I should say. Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk about two highly publicized cases from New York City. One is the Kentucky clerk who refused to issue a marriage register to the gay couples and she served a brief custodial sentence for that. It got a lot of attention and there's another case that's getting quite a lot of attention, though perhaps not just as much, and that is a Muslim stewardess on um, an airline who is refusing to serve alcohol to customers because her fear prohibits it. Um, first of all, I'll talk briefly about both cases. Um, the Kentucky clerk uh, is saying due to her deep religious conviction, she can't do that. Um, apparently, she's a registered Democrat, but some Republican contenders have openly expressed sympathy to her. Mike Huckabee apparently visited her, her and herself. Um, obviously, this federal law now has legalized gay marriage across the nation, unless I'm mistaken. I know there's a few states that are questioning that or going through the legal process to put it on hold. Um, but basically, this is a federal action. So gay marriage is now legal in the United States. So this clerk is technically breaking the law. That's the first issue um, that's quite obvious. Now, in regards to her religious freedom, this is something that needs to be, especially in the United States, which is a much more religious country than European countries. So the importance of freedom, freedom of religion cannot be understated as a, as a subject in its own right. Um, I personally think that killing her was a mistake um, for a few reasons. Number one, it was a non-violent offence. It was an offence, but it's a non-violent offence. Um, secondly, the US has a far too pres high prison population anyway. And thirdly, um, I, I think that her views are just downright bigoted. And I think that jailing her will only martyrize her. Uh, and it's already shown signs of doing that. I mean, her lawyer compared it to the civil rights campaign and Martin Luther King visiting um, freedom riders in jail. Um, that obviously angered a lot of people because to try and compare people who were struggling for equality to someone who is in jail because she basically opposes equality is clearly nonsensical. Um, I don't think she should have been jailed. I think it would have been better to give her a fine, something like that, or take away her license as a register, but to actually jail her, I think is excessive. Um, so that's a background to that case. Um, the, the broad background, um, obviously I'm not going to all the details here because these are already highly prominent cases. The second case is this Muslim student who is refusing. And the reason, by the way, I'm saying they're Christian and Muslim is that's how they identify themselves. It's not a case that I'm labeling and this is how they identify themselves. Um, the Muslim student is refusing to serve alcohol. Um, now, apparently what happened was initially some of her colleagues done it for her. But then one of them complained, presumably because it's causing workplace tensions. Like, oh, why do we have to do your job? That sort of thing. Um, and now the airline has, uh, from what I gather, suspended her. Um, I think it's a low budget airline, Express Jet. Um, I don't know too much of the background to that, but that's a broad background. Um, incidentally, that's why I'm not naming the individuals involved, simply because I don't want to make statements that may or may not be untrue. But these are the general backgrounds to these cases. Um, both in the United States, uh, which is a country that obviously puts a lot of emphasis on freedom of religion. Um, one thing that is striking about both cases is they are both in the public domain. In the first case, she is a marriage registrar, right? So that means it's in the public domain. I'm not sure if it's classed as a, if she could be classed as a civil servant, but she's working in the public domain. 
It's not like she operates a private business. Um, it's in the public community. The second case, again, likewise, it's an airline. Um, on the second case, I think it's very important to note she's refusing to serve alcohol. This isn't a case that she's being asked to even drink alcohol. Um, she's been asked to serve it. So in other words, she's making a judgment on the morals of whether or not passengers should drink. If this was a case of there was a problem, for example, with drunk passengers, and she was raising concerns about that, that would be a completely different matter. But what she's actually doing is passing a judgment based on her religious views. Now, the issue here is not whether drinking is right or wrong, and it isn't about whether her opinion is right or wrong. It is about the context. The context is she works in the public domain. And as a lot of people have pointed out, including other Muslims, um, she chose to apply to the job. She knew this was a public airline. She knew that they have alcohol in their in their um, catering services. Um, so for her to then turn around and suddenly play the victim, I think it's, I've not much sympathy with that. Um, put simply, if she doesn't want to do it, then she shouldn't be in that job. You know, this is very different from someone forcing her to drink. Um, we ha we cannot underestimate this factor about the public domain because you cannot have a situation where an individual trumps a majority. Um, not that everyone on the plane will want to drink, but certainly a few people will. And if that is an option, that's their right as paying customers. They have paid for the airline. If drinks are on the flight, if they want to relax with a nice cool rider or a glass of wine whilst reading a magazine, that is their right. And for her to um, potentially make them feel difficult, like you can imagine the setup. If you're a passenger, um, you say to the stewardess, "Oh, I'll, I'll take number four, the 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 bud, please." Oh no, I'm sorry, uh, it's against my belief. I'm not going to serve you. That's just downright rude. Um, in the end of the day, if you're in the public sector, you cannot pass judgment on members of the public. You just can't. If it's a case of being personally harassed or something like that, that's different. But we cannot underestimate the fact that this is in the public domain. Now, obviously, these two cases are in the United States, but there has been similar cases in the UK and elsewhere. Um, so I'm using these cases as a template to reflect on the wider situation. I basically take the view that people should have religious freedom. In other words, they should have absolutely every right to practice their religion, to have those views. Um, so, for example, no one is stopping her from believing that drinking is wrong. So, don't drink. Um, and don't get into a job where you are obliged to serve the customers. You know, it's. I think I've heard similar cases in the UK where, where people have refused to handle uh, in supermarkets some Muslim employees have refused to serve goods that happen to be against a religious conviction. Now, I have to say these are particularly religious people. Not every Muslim would agree with this. And not every Christian would agree with that clock. Um, the first case especially, I think the response to it was a mistake. I don't I didn't see any need to jail her. Um, I think that was a huge mistake. And all it's going to do is kind of promote the perception that it's an overbearing government that's um, criminalizing citizens for their religious views. That I, I don't believe that is necessarily the case, but I do think that will be the perception. Um, again, though, she, she chose to be a public registrar. Um, you know, clearly, maybe the two cases are slightly different because obviously with the gay marriage thing, that's a recent amendment to the law. Um, but recent change in the law, I should say. So maybe it's slightly different from the airline case, but both cases are about working in the public domain. Both cases involve religion. So like I say, I, I do believe that people have a right to have a religion, to have their religious views. So if they believe that drinking is wrong, then don't drink. And, uh, you know, they have every right, for example, in their own house to insist that people don't bring alcohol or whatever. But um, when you're working in the public domain, you cannot impose yourself that way. You just can't.
because then it becomes a case of one person trumping the majority. And that's just plain ridiculous. So um, let me know your thoughts on this. If you know more details about addiction, feel free to share those details of consumption I haven't mentioned that is very important. Um, that's not deliberate on my part. I just um, I don't want to talk in massive length about both cases because they're already highly publicised. Um, but that's it. I think if you choose to take a but okay, let's say for example I choose to work in a news agency. I'll use this as an example. Let's say I choose to work in a news agency. Now, I have utter contempt for the tabloid press. I believe they are damaging to this country. I don't believe they offer anything positive whatsoever. Now, let's say I was working as a cashier in a, in a news agency and a, a customer brought the Daily Express or the Sun. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not serving you that because I don't believe in that paper. Now, would I be in the wrong? Of course I would. Why? Because my job is to process through the checkpoint, um, tell them how much it is, take the money, put it in the cash account, and that's it. Nothing else. Uh, it's not my job to judge what newspaper they're reading. Or if I was going to do that, I'd do it privately. Um, likewise, if this Muslim flight attendant, if she wants to think what she wants in her own mind, fine. we're all sovereign of her own thinking. But for her to translate that into just refusing to do it, um, again, just to be clear, no one's forcing her to drink it. No one is forcing her even to, you know, there's not even physical contact. She's simply handling it or the glass and that's it. Um, so I have no sympathy. The clerk, um, I think it was a mistake jailing her, but I, other than that, I mean, I think that was excessive. I don't think she should have been jailed. But other than that, again, I have no sympathy. Because if you're in the public domain, then you're in the public domain. So I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Do you think that religious um, conviction trumps uh, public laws? Do you think it trumps um, obligations if you're working in the public sector? Because that seems to be the problem. Here.